All right, good morning. We are on to our revision series. And this morning, we'll be looking at continuing with our chapter one, using the knowledge of fraud. We'll be looking at Pythagoras' theorem. Um, it's quite a straightforward theorem that applies to the right angle triangle of right angle triangle of any triangle. So the triangle is right angle. Pythagoras theorem or rule can work. All right, what does it say? What does the Pythagoras rule say essentially? It says that in a right angle triangle, I have a right angle triangle in this nature, and I call it A, C, B, the right angle at C. This side, this, the, the angle facing this side is called, uh, and the side facing this angle is called C, A, and B. In that order, this knowledge will help you. In fact, what you call your cosine rule is an expanded Pythagoras rule. Come again. Your cosine rule is an expanded Pythagoras rule. Now, what you will be saying is that this square of the hypotenuse side will be the same thing as if I square and add both sides, the other side. The triangle has three sides. Now I can get the Pythagoras side by what? The square of it and the, the, sorry, the hypotenuse side by squaring this and this and then adding up there. So this is the BC is equal to A squared um, plus B squared, and by extension, A squared is equal to C squared minus B squared, which means that A is equal to the square root of what? C uh, squared minus B squared, and then also B squared is equal to C squared minus A squared, and by extension, that would be the square root of C squared minus A squared. So this is what the Pythagoras rule essentially is talking about. Now, if you go to exercise, exercise one, one L, what you notice there are sections, and you're required to find what X as a function of the triangles that have been drawn there. Now, what they do, what they have done there is to, uh, like you see the first question, um, that what the first question looks like. Now, notice that this is 90, this is x, this is 3. This is 12 and this is 13. Now, how do you get X? X is in, in the side of interest to me. How will you get X? I don't know that you have this case with you have your new grammar mathematics book three. If you have it, it will be very handy for you. But if you don't have it, uh, then you really need to pay close attention to what I'm speaking. And then if for any reason you notice that you're not seeing what I have on the board clearly. Please do well to draw my attention by chart so that I can attend to that. All right. With that in mind, this is what I need. I can get this. So I will produce another letter. Let me call it Y. So while I'm solving, I will tell my examiner using the picture of the diagram, using the picture as a diagram. That's why the passage of math is very interesting. I draw the diagram, and then I tell my examiner that this is the diagram I have. So this is what I'm going to use. I need an indication and music so that when it's mapping my work, it's mapping based on my own location. They're not penalized for that. Okay, having done that, I will advise my students. For the purpose of learning and understanding the function very well, break the diagram. Skip them. If you want from the top, this is what you are going 
behind. I think I have something like this. So this is green, this is X, this is Y. This side is also Y. This side is 12, this side is 13. So I need to get Y to be able to get X. So I'm going to have that Y squared plus 12 squared is equal to 13 squared. Meaning that Y squared plus 1 plus 4 equal to 169. I am getting this part. Although for you, you have, you have access to calculator, so you can do that. But sometimes some of these things can actually be solved without the use of your calculator. If you need 25, why did you take the 25? You can have the 5. So that part is important to my work here. So why I want to solve this and then state first that what? Y squared is equal to what? X squared plus 3 squared. Now, at the level of preparing for this exam, you are like you want to the exam now. You must try to make your work as simple as possible. First of all, at this point, I need to make x the subject of the formula because that's what I'm looking for. The x squared will be y squared minus 1 and 3 squared. So, what is x? What is y? y is what? 5, 5 squared minus 3 squared. I'm not in a hurry. Not in a hurry. Take your time. Because some of them will rush. You make more mistakes when you rush. You can only rush when you have good understanding of the steps you are taking. So as you are rushing, you are taking the steps. Okay? But if you are not sure, you know, if, if you are prone to mistake, take it right one. Now this will be x squared. Because it will be 5 minus 9. What does that give you x will not be put to the square root of 163? x is going to be what? 4. So that's how this is solved. People can have different information to do, but I always prefer to take the diagram because why? It helps to enhance your imagination. I like this aspect of math because it's there to help enhance your imagination. So when you break the diagram, it makes the work clearer. And as you keep doing it, it will help you also when you go into topics like circuit geometry. Then you don't have to do all the things in your mind without having to draw them out. And so that's for question one. Um, I'll put up question. All right, this is that one we have, and I'm going to use two new letters, Y and Z. So I will start by saying using notations. as a diagram. This is a question that's in diagram. I will then piece this into two triangles. I'm going to have one triangle that looks like this. I'm going to have another triangle that looks like this. The first one will be Y, the second one will be Z. The whole of this big triangle, this will be 40, this will be 24. This will be Y, this will be 25, and this will be what 24. You look at it, the big sides are equal, but the only different is the work is right inside. So let's move this part on. So, with that in mind, I need to get Y, I need to get Z. I can get Y, I can get Z from that circuit. Now, look at it. So, uh, 24 squared plus Y squared is equal to 25 squared. So, at this point, I can decide to expand. All right, I can decide to find the perfect square. This is 2, uh, 576 plus Y squared. Okay, I can use another approach. I think it's time for me to be able to uh, stretch your thinking. Let's use another approach. Y squared will not be equal to 25 squared minus 24 squared. I hope you know that this is as 25 plus 24 into 25 minus 24. I hope you are aware of that. 
if you are not aware of that, that's the concept of difference of this day. Now, what do you know this year? The principle you apply is a function of how well you are practiced. Because I will make you use another method to solve, and I remember that, hey, why am I wasting my time? I can actually use this. Now, I only I will iterate this to my students. The philosophy to avoid calculator is the best way to do in mathematics. And it's strong advocate of don't use a calculator. And you can see it, I don't use a calculator. I disciplined my mind that I wouldn't use a calculator. And it has opened my mind to lots of possibilities. The only way you can see the principle is to avoid the calculator. Look at the calculator is your, it's your, it's your, it's what is your, it's what slow you down in the exam. The reason I've been called to what? Uh, 49 times 1. So why I will not be able to the square of 49? And that is what? 7. That settles that. Why is 7? So let's go to x. Now x squared plus uh, 40. Sorry, z. Actually, z. I'm sorry about that. z squared plus 24 squared equal to 40 squared. Imagine how you, the calculator you have a, point, a function by now, but you are avoiding that. Look at that. This is the word 40 plus uh, 24. Now this is really 64. It's a word uh, 40 minus 24. What does that give you? 64 times what? 16. Z will be the square root of 64 times 16. Now, another mistake here, this class is not just for you to just solve problems alone and get answer. I'm also opening your eyes because by next month you'll be writing the exam. I'm opening your eyes to things to those things you must look out for. Now we are finishing our work. Those things you must look out for as we solve. Then you have the word 64 times 16. How did I get that? I added this to I got 64. I subtracted this, I got this. So the concept of difference of this square, look at it here, a squared minus b squared will be what? a plus b into a minus b. You must know this. You have to remember it. And more importantly, you have to be able to recognize the point you see in the question. So this will now be equal to what? 8 times 4, and my answer will be what? 32. So, what then is x? Remember that we said that z is equal to x plus y. Meaning that x is equal to z minus y. It will not be what? 32 minus what? 7. What is that? 25. I think I'm right with that. The x will not be what? 25. Let's see if there's something interesting here we can learn. So, how are you? So, look at that. This is the diagram you're giving. Now you're going to look for X. You cannot find X without getting this part. You can't get X without getting I will delete my Y here. Then I'll tell my examiner using location. Locations at the diagram. I will now redraw. That's the first thing you must do. It's, in fact, it's one of the it's one of the objectives I want you to uh, work. I want us to achieve in this class. The ability to draw the diagram. So that's the diagram you are having. Let's run that quickly and then we'll go straight ahead to solve. And let the reading pass. So the idea from here can be used in so many other areas of math. You can use it in theory, you can use it in the trigonometry, lots of areas of math. You can use this concept. So you should be able to identify when you see such a now, from here, you discover that 
y squared plus 4 is equal to 9 squared. So what do I have? y squared is equal to 9 squared minus 4 squared. So what is that? 9 plus 4 into 9 minus 4. And that will give you what? 13 times 5. Am I correct? Please verify that. So what that means is that y is equal to the square root of what? 65. That's for y. Now, how do you get x? <laughs> it means that x squared plus 5 squared will be equal to what? y squared. Look at this. This diagram now. I've used this. Now I'm using this. So from that, I will now make x the solution of the formula. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. There's a mistake somewhere. x squared is actually equal to y squared plus 5 squared. All right, sorry for that. Now, what is y? y is with 65. Just put, sorry, y is with 65. So it implies that y squared will be what? 65. So I'll just put 65 here, substitution. Take note of that. The learning point here is that as you are solving in the world, you must keep track of what you are doing. Plus 25 equal to what? 90. So x will have the square root of 90, which will be what? 3 root 10. You can find the square root of 9, and you can find the square root of 10. For some of us who do not see what I'm trying to do, let me report something we learned to solve. So it's not that. Those, that was the reason I talked to Saul. You should be able to recognize. And that's the most important aspect of this learning. Ability to recognize what has been, what has been, what the question requires of you in the examination hall. Right, so that is for question 2A. Let's look at question. Okay, let me let me give you some time to try this one out. Now, for this diagram, you will need to get this one. Let me call it A. With that one, you will get B before you cannot get X. So try it out. I'll just give you five minutes to try that one out. Using notations as in diagram. That's the first thing. The next thing is to piece the diagram. Now look at what I'm going to do. This is one. So this is for BX. Look at another one. I've just drawn it as they appear there. You necessarily don't need to. You can actually, um, you can actually Draw them straight out like this. No problem. Nobody will penalize you. Provided you know what you are doing. This is hypotenuse side is B. Then three and four. Nobody will penalize you. Provided you know what you are doing. And you do your level correctly. This is two, this is one, and this is what? A. Come, come, come. There's something I have missed too. Okay, sorry. This is uh, 3A, sorry, this is A. All right, so I've drawn the three diagrams. Now, please, remember that it's not purposely you draw this diagram. I'm only drawing this to help for the purpose of practice so that you have an idea of what's happening. The student can choose in the hall to from here. I can actually look at this and be solving out. But it's important you, you identify this size, because these are the sides you must get to be able to get the X. Right, so with that in place, 
I will then proceed. I look at the first one. Um, one a squared is equal to one squared plus two squared. If this a squared is equal to one plus four, and a will be equal to the square root of what? Five. I see that. Any issues with that? Trust not. Now, the next thing you do is to look at this one. This is uh, where the 90 degrees now. Okay, I decided to draw like this. Now, the next one is a squared plus three squared is equal to b squared. So what do you have? What is a? If a, a is this, a squared will now be what? Five. Now, it means that b squared will be equal to what? a squared plus three squared. I'm just taking things to do it well. That would be five. A squared is five plus what? Nine. So b is equal to the square root of what? 14. Are we seeing that? So I've got it A and I've got it B. Now, how do I get X? For the third diagram, it means that 4 squared plus B squared is equal to X squared. So X squared is equal to 4 16 plus what is B squared? B squared is 4. If this is this, B squared is equal to 14. So plus 14. Meaning that X equal to the square root of what? 30. And that's the answer. Now, this is where I will stop. What you do next is a function of what the question is telling you. The question might say, to the nearest whole number, to the nearest this, live in sort form. But I've solved living in sort form because I'm, I'm coming from the direction of sorts. All right, that takes care of that. The question says VHB is seven kilometers south of A, and C is what nine kilometers south of B. Now, village B is eight kilometers north of A. Village what? D is eight kilometers north of A. And is due east of B. It is east. And uh, now please watch you. Oh, it's due east. Due east means in this direction. D is due east, this direction. And A is, uh, and it's also what? It's eight kilometers from A. It's eight kilometers from A. Okay, sorry, eight kilometers from A and D is okay. That's what you mean. Sorry, this was to mean D. Eight kilometers due east of what A. Okay, stop. Oh, did I get this narrative right? It is eight kilometers from A. That it could be this. It could be eight kilometers in this direction, in this direction, in this direction. And is due east of B. Due east of B. This is B. So uh, uh, we really need to look at this diagram very, very carefully. The first one we have got it right. B is due south of A, good. And C is what? Nine kilometers south of B, good. Now, D is eight kilometers from A. D is eight kilometers from 
from A. Now, if we get the parameters from A, it's going to be something like this. Now, I don't know the exact position it is. Look at this. This is what I'm, I'm good at. The is going to look like. Eight kilometers from A. I don't know where it's going to land. It's somewhere around. Well, there's an added information now, and it is due east of B. So, likely, this is where, since it is due east of B, likely this is where it's going to be. Where I think it's going to be. So, B should be somewhere here. Anyway, if we solve and we, we have made a mistake there, we can always correct the arrangement much later. Now, it says find the distance of D from B and from C. The diagram is correct. So, this is what you are going to do. I see it. This is what the diagram will look like. So, I'm correct. So, now, the whole of this distance here will be 16, 7 plus 9. Now, we know here to be 7. Let's find the distance of D from B. This one on the place you need to find. And then from C, this is another place you need to find. Why? So you need to find this, you need to find this. Now, remember that to get, okay, fine, fine, we, can, we don't know this. So we know this is eight, eight kilometers. So this and this will help you get this. And then this and this will help you get this. So that's a good question. So let me redraw that. Now, look at this diagram. I'm going to piece them now. I've turned it. So this is uh, uh, D, and this is A. And this is B. A, B, 7. This is 8 kilometers. I will take a look for this one, which are 4 X. Now, the second diagram will be this. And it's going to be, I'll think the area at 8 kilometers. So let me extend this a little more so that it will make a lot different. And then this part, will be 16 kilometers. So this will be A, this will be D, and this will be C. So this will now be um, Y. So how do we go about solving that? We know that X squared here will be equal to 8 squared plus 7 squared. 64 plus 49. 64 plus 49, that's a 113. The x is equal to the square root of 113. Please confirm that for me. Then for y, you can, you can use your whatever and find out that for later in kilometers. Now for y, it's equal to 8 squared plus 16 squared. This is equal to 64 plus. 64 plus 256. And that will give me 320. I hope I'm right with that. That will give me 320. That will give me 320. So y is equal to the square root of 320. So this is y squared. Eh? So y will now be equal to uh, 16. I can get 16 from there. I can get 32, 64. So that's uh, 8 to 5. To so confirm that 8 to 5 kilometers, that's what it's going to be. You can use your calculator or whatever you need to do and verify those answers. So that's exactly what that question requires you to do. Okay, thank you very much for the time we have spent on this topic, chapter one. We are done with chapter one of the uh, New General Mathematics. Um, we trust we have done a very decisive job to that. We'll be going to a new topic, 
in our next meeting. And then we trust that um, these revisions will help you do better. In our next topic, in our next uh, class, we're looking at revision on log reading, use of log reading tables, and use of um, solving by way of um, simple use of process of indices and the likes. Just to find the next um, chapter interesting. Thank you.